Welcome back to Switch to Linux. I'm joined by uh, Ivan today, and uh, Linux Mint has released a new blog post, and I always love covering these when they come out. And so I wanted to talk about what is going on. The first is, of course, Mint 20X is reached end of life. Uh, so I was commenting on this on the earlier part of the uh, stream live stream where we we're recording this that uh, my old uh, MSI computer is now at 20.3. Like, oh, I got to go end of life. I was planning on using that one to do those Linux Mint uh, um, uh, videos I did a couple weeks ago. But uh, um, yeah, I had to switch over. So 20.3 did reach end of life in May. So uh, I will actually be upgrading that from the 20.3 up to the 21. Stay tuned for a video on that. We're not rolling that all the way to the latest as I keep the MSI laptop as old as is supported and I keep my other laptops as new as is supported just so I always have good test Linux Mint laptops running uh, but that has reached end of life they will continue to work but without security updates think Windows 10 in October you know um, you can still use it uh, you shouldn't <laughs> okay. um, so they have uh, they say there's uh, a couple options you can do a fresh installation they always recommend the fresh installation uh, there was actually an an issue that some people a couple issues that some people had noticed when you were rolling from older versions rolling up into the newer versions you always get a little bit better results when you install a brand new one uh, from scratch but there's reasons you may not want to do that there's settings you might have there's a bunch of files you might have there's a lot of reasons you may not want to do that so i understand that but uh, just something to keep in mind uh, that is of course 22.1 is supported until 2029 that should be one year after oh sweet meteor of doom apophis lands into the ocean but we'll see <laughs> um you can upgrade through linux mint 21 that'll get you support through 2027 so two more years so they do have some tutorials there and uh, we will talk about upgrading from 20.3 we're going to roll up to the 21 branch probably 21.3 and then hold it there for a little bit so i will talk a little bit about that uh, there are other minor upgrades towards 20.3 that are simple and fast upgrading from 20 dot three to 21 is a major upgrade it's longer more complicated take your time on it don't hesitate to ask so i will be doing that particular video there hopefully we'll be successful we'll see what happens ivan thoughts on linux mint end of life or hey maybe you want to throw something in there about windows end of life what do you think oh uh, well <laughs> linux end of life eh, it's just just that branch just that 20 branch uh yeah it's like yeah it's, it's like you were saying yeah you could still use it but it's not going to get any security updates stuff like that it's much like with everything with windows after windows 10 goes out uh what was it october 14th or something like that yep. yeah you could still use it but you're not going to get any updates unless you do that extended support program or whatever the thing and then yep. you throw in the extra money stuff like that it's like is on the linux side yeah it's like there's really no excuse to up to upgrade stuff like that. Granted, if you don't have the hardware capabilities of it, namely the 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 space for any additional files or anything like that. But you know, it's it's like why it sh it should be a no brainer. It's just kind of like yeah, you do it. Whereas on on the Windows side of it, it's like yeah, you could be uh, it's it's a process to get something running. Yep. Stuff like yeah. That. So. Yep. Yeah, you can you can keep it. You can reinstall it. Of course, with Linux, it's pretty easy. You can just take your home folder and uh, copy your home folder over, reinstall it, and then just migrate your home folder back over onto the new system. So we'll talk about those different options when we get into that. Yeah. All right, the next one, the controversial one, possibly, depending on uh, what you think about this stuff. Linux Mint um, is doing fingerprint authentication in Linux Mint 22.2 will feature a new app called Fingwit. Uh, it is a fingerprint configuration tool that if your computer has a fingerprint scanner, you I, can now use your fingerprints to authenticate. Ooh. I actually you guys, have one that has one. Yeah. How's that work for you? It don't. That's the pro. That, well, that isn't a problem. That's you know, I I could care less. Yeah. So so uh, there was an old application for uh, on Linux Mint that allowed you to do this. 
um, but they have replaced this with Fingwit, which is a lot more uh, smarter configuration tool. As you can see from the show, uh, the screen here, it has a way to choose which fingerprint you want to do. If you want to like give the whole uh, middle finger to uh, the big tech you with fingerprint fingwit. scanners, you can do that. <laughs> um, but you can choose which finger you're going to be indexing. And this system here allows you to authenticate your system into a log screen. Um, uh, get it past the screensaver, do pseudo commands and some admin checks. Now this, they're using this particular tool here because it is, um, uh, this one here is a lot smarter than the older one. Uh, for example, if you have a full disk encryption, it cannot unlock a full disk encryption. And so it will not let you use a fingerprint to log in in that situation because the, um, ecrypt FS still yeah, requires a password. So, um, the, what we're trying to do here is, um, give you more options, bring Linux Mint into this for the people that want these more modern features. Now I have not evaluated, is this, it, it should be being Linux Mint, it should be extraordinarily safe, should keep everything on the system. But I'm personally, I am not the end user of this, but I can understand where some people might want this type of thing. It could be very easy to scan your fingerprint instead of entering a pseudo password for doing basic things. Even if the only case you might think about it is if you are encrypting the disk, you still need your master password to get in and then you can use your fingerprint for everything once you are there. That's kind of what they're working on. All right, Ivan thoughts. Yeah. I did the, I, it's like, I appreciate the idea to go forward with something like this. And I know that it's got its use case for the right people. And for myself, it's, it's not for me. I don't really need it. I don't want it. I'm not going to bother with it. But for the folks that could actually have a good usable use case for it, hey, you know, being Linux Mint, it's like you were saying, it's a lot safer being Linux Mint in particular. And, uh, you know, it's like, yeah, it's... I mean, namely, it's like if any kind of source file regarding the data from the print is strictly local in the OS on the system right there at your desk, I don't see any really big problem in using it. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't, but that's just me. But yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, if people want to use it, go ahead and use it and stuff like that. It's not for everybody myself included but uh for others it might be something that's viable and uh you know they, they might actually be interested curious you know yeah. I might play around I mean, with it. this is not unlike they do the fingerprinting on phones which you know in reality is not moving up into the big cloud as far as we know mm -hmm. um i'm just i just still don't want to use biometrics especially since yeah. uh we know in the in the force of law that a pin number still is not something that you can guarantee somebody can extract from you to unlock a device. Whereas a fingerprint is codified in law that yes, you can be mandated to hand over biometrics to enter a device, whereas you cannot be required to hand over a pin to get into a device. Right. Uh, Dan, any thoughts on fingerprints in Linux Mint? Um, well, first of all, if you're encrypting your drive and there's people that want to get past that, um, I don't think it's a good idea for that, if you, especially if you want to keep all your fingers. Well, well, again, no. in, in this particular implementation on Linux Mint, they are do not have a way that you can decrypt your drive with your fingerprint. You still That's have to the use point. your point. Yeah. If you're encrypting your drive, that makes people think that you have something to hide. So goodbye, fingers. Well, they can take your fingers all you want. You still can't get into your drive. Well, <laughs> however, I do think it's um, it's it's doable if you want to use a toe. Hmm. So, I don't know. Um, um, I use a toe on one of my phones, so that's interesting. It does work. <laughs> Fascinating. Excuse well, me, I gotta log in. <laughs> Most Do that for your conference calls, right? Yeah, most of the time I just use the PIN number, though. It was a test. It does. Yeah, yeah. It's, the system does work with toes, but it's it's not my cup of tea either. It's quicker for me to go beep, beep, boop, boop, and I'm in my, whatever, you know? Yeah. yeah. Especially a computer, you know? I never used to, when I was on Windows, I used to never have a PIN to get into it. I just let the computer boot right into Windows 
and not give it a second thought. So we'll move on here. Um, X viewer color correction. Uh, so we're working on themes and colors. X viewers image viewer was applying an ED, a EDID color based correction filter to pictures and wasn't showing pictures exactly as they were. So that was uh, a problem, of course. Feature could sometimes lead to a scenario where you could take a screenshot of an app, open the screenshot, uh, color pick the app and the screenshot um, and the app would get different color codes. That can be a problem. Maybe that's what was at one time I was working with somebody trying to grab a color code and like the colors were not lining up and it was baffling both of us. Who knows? Maybe that was it. I can't remember. I think I was on a Linux Mint computer when I did that. Who knows? Uh, mm -hmm. Using GIMP. So uh, color management has already handled the hardware and desktop level. We found the feature in XViewer surprising and counterintuitive. So they... Uh, uh, made it uh, optional and to disable it by default. So that's good. We'll just go through these other ones here real quick as well before we stop again. Um, Libadweta um, apps and patches, of course, starting with 22.2. Libadweta will be patched to work with system themes. So there was some back and forth with Libadweta and uh, it, there were some issues and some challenges with it. And um, they decided that they would go ahead and support it and just back patch it for what they needed. And so that's kind of what they decided to do. So GNOME Calendar, Simple Scan, and I don't, what is that last one? B-A-O-B-A-B. -B -B. I have no idea what that application is. Those are now changed to use the latest LibAdWeta um, versions there. So now they have a LibAdWeta uh, at fork. So they fork this out for using their own X for, for using X app. So they don't have to patch everything. So they can basically make a uh, lid lib adapta is what they're doing. And uh, they fork this out uh, in order to basically make all the apps work utilizing that rather than uh, having to sync all this code between the patches on lib adweta. Yeah, I mean, as far as everything regarding that, we're going to live that way and stuff like that. I mean, for my purposes and my daily operations, stuff like that, it's really not that much of a big deal. So it's, it doesn't really affect me all that much. I, I, I definitely appreciate the fact that they gave it attention to resolve the issues that it does affect people in a mm -hmm. you know, not so good way and that they're actually trying to rectify that problem. I, I very much appreciate that. Yeah, so that this is good. It brings a lot of more cohesion for the people that have like OCD. Everything's got to look the same, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Last thing that they have here is uh, framework. Of course, framework laptops. Uh, the company sent uh, Clem a laptop, um, uh, the latest hardware, so they could test it uh, with gaming, desktop, things like that. So. Uh, he basically just made some there and uh, testing the full compatibility and they were able to, um, it says all thanks to them that we worked on the fingerprint authentication and pushed towards uh, the hardware kernel in Linux Mint 22.2. Uh, mostly that uh, a lot of this development with the fingerprint stuff came from framework giving them access to some really good hardware. So uh, cool for that. Then there's some good sponsors down there for it. So. You can uh, sift through all that. That is what Linux Mint is up to for the month. Any final comments on Linux Mint? I like that they're working with framework. And that, yeah, that, that's intriguing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really good because it's like you know I've seen videos about about the framework uh, modularity and stuff like that, and and then um, and I actually at that time, and this is going back months at this point. But, you know, I saw that and I'm like, you know, what would it, how would it work with Linux? Wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be nice to be able to have something Linux based in there and to see how it behaves with Linux? And uh, of course, you know, right, right off my head, <laughs> Linux Mint, hello. And so I like the fact that Linux Mint is actually working with it and reviewing it and seeing how it can go. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, so there is what Linux Mint is up to. So uh, we can, uh, of course, stay tuned to their site, linuxmint.com, and uh, see what else they are up to uh, soon.